In this video, we'll look at the intersection of two lines in three space. So you're given two lines, one's parametric and one's vector in terms of how its equation is written. The first equation is x equals negative 5 plus 3t, the second is y equals 2 plus 2t, and the third is z equals negative 7 plus 6t. All those are the pieces of one equation, a parametric equation, of a line. The second equation here, I'll label that equation 2, is a vector equation, 0, negative 6, negative 3, plus k, 1, negative 5, negative 1. Direction vector and a point. All right, we want to find where these two lines intersect. Well, it's worth pointing out first that we could observe the direction vector for this parametric equation. It's direction vector, I'll just call that d. Its direction vector is 3, 2, 6. And the reason we did that is just to quickly observe that these lines are not parallel. Clearly, 3 to get to 1, you divide by 3, but 2 divided by 3 is not negative 5. So these are not parallel lines. So, not parallel. Therefore, they either have one point of intersection or they are skew. That is, they're just two lines. If you think about it, imagine two lines in space. They're either just past each other in space without ever touching, or they touch in one spot. Let's see what the case is here. Well, we've already got one equation in parametric for form, equation one. We want to make equation two into parametric form. So let's get equation two just writing down here, that's from equation 2, and I'm going to rewrite this as parametric equation. The x is 0 plus 1k, so I'm just going to write k, 0 plus 1k, that's just like 0 plus k, 0 plus k is just k. And y equals negative 6 minus 5k, and z equals negative 3 minus k. Now, I kept this x, y, and z, I didn't differentiate because the, if there is a point of intersection, this x, y, z should match this x, y, z. In other words, I can set these two things equal and solve, and I should get the right answer. I should get the same x, y, z as the same x, y, z. Otherwise, they don't have a point of intersection, they're skew. In other words, let's set this x equal to this x. So you get negative 5 plus 3t has to equal k. And it's the next one. 2 plus 2t has to equal the other y equation, negative 6 minus 5k. And finally, negative 7 plus 6t has to equal this z equation, negative 3 minus k. Let's call those equations a, b, c. So I'm going to solve these equations. I have three equations, two unknowns. That's going to help tell me if there is a point of intersection. We can work with any two equations, but what's really nice is equation A has k by itself already. I, I could do elimination if I wanted, but since I have k by itself, I'm going to use substitution. I'll go up here. Sub A into B. That is, I'm going to take equation B, 2 plus 2t two equals negative 6 minus 5, but in place of k, I'm going to sub in equation a, and I get negative 5 plus 3t in there. Okay, now we're just going to use our algebra skills. This is still 2 plus 2t is negative 6, and we'll rainbow or distribute this minus 5 in. Minus 5 times minus 5 plus 25, and minus 5 times 3 is negative 15, so negative 15t. And so we get, let's see, we've got, I guess the next thing, best thing to do would be collect like terms. There's lots of ways to go. But let's collect like terms, and you get 19. I got that from negative 6 plus 25 by collecting these like terms, same side, minus 15t. Now I'd like to get all the t's on one side. Let's get all the t's to the left, say. So get this negative 15 over here, add 15t both sides. And you get 2 plus, this is 2 and 15, that's 17t's. 
equals 19. Oh, this is going to be good. Now I'm going to get all the numbers to the other side. So take away two both sides. And you get 17t equals, well, 17. And now whatever's in front of t is timesing t. So to get rid of it, divide both sides by what's in front of t. In this case, 17. And you get t equals 1. But we haven't solved anything yet. We've just got a t that we think works. So let's see what it gives us. If we have t equals 1, we can go back to our equation 1 here. Let's sub t equals 1 into 1. And you get x equals negative 5 plus 3 times 1. That's negative 5 plus 3, which is just negative 2. And if you sub the t equals 1 into there, you get 2 plus 2 times 1, which 2 plus 2 is 4. And z, z is negative 6 plus 6 times t, which is negative 7 plus 6, which of course is negative 1. So we have an answer, negative 2 for negative 1. But that's just finding t. There are other ways to confirm that we're right, but I like to check it by checking the k value. So what, is I, what I'm going to do is find k. So from here, let's see, use t equals 1 to find k. And by that I'm going to sub t equals 1 into, could be any equation, but obviously the a equation is easier. I'm going to sub t equals 1 into a. I get negative 5 plus 3 times t equals k. And that's negative 5 plus 3, which just gives you negative 2. Okay. So I have a solution here, which is negative 2 for k and t of 1. t of 1 gives me this point. If there is a point of intersection, this k better give me the same point that this t gave me, negative 2, 4, negative 1. If it doesn't, they're skew. The lines never touch. If it gives me the same point, that's where they meet. So let's check. So I'm going to sub k equals negative 2 into, and I can sub it into this equation 2 or this equation 2. Let's tell them apart. I'm going to call this equation 2a. Just to clarify, it's still equation 2, but I adjusted it. It's 2a. I'm going to sub it into there. I'm going to solve for its x, y, and z value. Its x is negative, nope, just k, which is negative 2. Good so far. Its y is negative 6 minus 5 times negative 2, which would be plus 10. Negative 5 times negative 2 is plus 10, which is negative 4. On a roll. And finally, negative 3 minus minus 2 is negative 3 plus 2, which is negative 1. We got it. Since we've got this k value producing the same point as this t value, we know we've got a point of in intersection. And we can write our concluding statement. Therefore, the point of intersection is negative 2, negative 4, and negative 1. We've done it. We found the intersection of two lines. How did we do that? Well, first we looked at their direction vectors and made sure that they weren't parallel, because if they were parallel, we'd have a different situation on our hands. Since they weren't parallel, we knew there's going to be one point of intersection, or are they just both floating in space, never touching? That's skew lines. So we made them both parametric equations, and then set them both equal and solve for t. We also used t to solve for k, and we compared what point do I get when I use t equals 1, the t we solve for, and what point do I get when I use the k value I solve for. I better get the same point. If I didn't, they'd be skew. But in fact, when I solve for t and solve for k, I got the exact same point, which means there's a point of intersection at negative 2, negative 4, negative 1.